Johnny, get your gun, get your gun, get your gun. Take it on the run, on the run, on the run. Hear them calling you. Welcome back to Frontline Rejects. Before we get started today, we'd appreciate it if you could help us out by hitting that like and subscribe button and by dropping a comment in the comment section below. And if you'd like to reach out to us directly, send us an email at frontlinerejects at gmail.com. The bullet we're testing today is the 143 grain Norma Bond Strike in 0.264 diameter, which we've got loaed up for our Savage Axis in 6.5 Creedmoor. This is, of course, a bonded bullet, and it's the second time that we've featured the Bond Strike here on the channel. We were extremely impressed with the 180 grain Bond Strike that we ran through our 300 Win Mag in a previous test here on the channel. It achieved best in class expansion, and we'll see today whether it can continue to uphold that in this chambering. Anyway, we're excited to get testing. We hope you are as well, so let's get started. This is the second time that we've tested the Norma Bond Strike. We previously ran the 180 grain offering through our 300 Win Mag, and if you haven't seen that video, there will be a link in the video description. When we ran the 180, we were impressed by the expansion numbers it produced. It was wider on average than both the Federal Terminal Ascent and the Nosler Acubond, which we also ran through the 300 WM. Granted, both those bullets were 200 grainers, so the 180 Bond Strike did have a slight velocity advantage, but nonetheless, it produced produced very high expansion and very high weight retention. Average weight retention for the 180 was 82%, which is in line with what we'd expect from a bonded core bullet, and expansion was a very impressive 2.83 times original width. As we see later on though, when we get to our graphs, this 143 grainer performed a bit differently. Quick note, the estimated impact velocities today were provided using JBM Ballistics software. Starting off at the 100, we have a congealed lump of lead peeking out from the bottom of the bullet, which is on the right side of the image, we can see some of the copper jacket, which is peeled back well below the base of the bullet. At the 200, we've got the largest chunk of the bullet that we could find. Surprisingly, a large chunk of it either broke off or turned into powder upon contact, and we did find some small lead flakes distributed among several jugs. 300 starts to look like a fully expanded and yet more intact projectile over the two, each side peeled back well below the base. At 400, the lead did not deform past the base, and expansion was a bit inconsistent. We think due 
due to the fact that this one came in a hair low and skimmed across the lath strips on the bottom of our trough. We finished out at the 500 just a hair above 2,000 feet per second with what I would consider to be textbook mushrooming from the Norma Bond Strike. Moving on to our graphs, expansion decreases from the 100 to 400 yard mark in a pretty consistent manner, which is exactly what we'd expect to see as it loses speed. We get a bit of an anomaly with the absolutely beautiful expansion at 500 yards, which produced a recovered projectile which is nearly three times its original size. Moving on to weight retention, that's all over the place. At the two, we lost just over half our projectile weight, and we didn't fare much better at the three and four. This gives us an average weight retention of 67.19%, which is a bit low for a bonded core bullet. Typically, we expect to see at least 80% weight retention from a bonded round, and again, the 180 bond strike met that standard at just over 82% weight retention. In fact, I think this is the first bonded bullet we've tested that has failed to meet that threshold, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Weight retention of 67% is still higher than what we see from most non-bonded cup and core rounds. Weight standard deviation is pretty high, which we don't really want to see, and is an indicator of inconsistency, especially considering that from the muzzle to our final impact of 500 yards, we stayed within 700 feet per second, which is a relatively low spread. And I think that ties into the use case for this bullet. In my opinion, this bullet and this grain weight really shines as a long-range hunting projectile for medium-sized game. To clarify a couple of those points when I say medium-sized game, I mean deer and smaller. Personally, I would not use this bullet on elk or anything larger. As one astute viewer pointed out on our test of the 180 with how soft this bullet is, it expands extremely well, but if you need to drive deep or punch through bone, it may not be the best option. With how wide it opens up, it will do a fantastic job of dumping all its energy into the target, translating into hydrostatic shock on thinner game. But with how fast it'll probably slow down, it may not drive deep enough on large, thick game. So for medium to long range hunting in a 6.5 diameter cartridge, I think this bullet excels, especially considering the high BC and how well I think it would expand at lower velocities. We'll have to test in the future how low of an impact speed it will reliably expand with, as I expect it will expand effectively at relatively low speeds due to the softer alloy and the jacket design that seems to have been used in its construction. We didn't get anywhere near its minimum expansion threshold today thanks to the high BC, which as we know translates into reduced drag. And at the 3, 4, and 5, it was hitting a little higher on our target than our drop chart, which was tailored to this projectile and the conditions we were shooting in was saying it would. I have heard some contention among folks online regarding the possibility of the BC figures for the bond strike being inflated, but so far I haven't found that to be the case. Although to be fair, I have not set out on any occasion to specifically test that. So just to recap, the 0.264 diameter 143 grain bond strike is an excellent option for a hunter planning on taking deer or antelope sized game at medium to longer distances thanks to its flight characteristics and terminal ballistics at lower speeds. We will be testing the bond strike in several more chamberings in the future and if you don't want to miss those tests and more, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you got something out of today's content, consider helping us out by liking the video and commenting. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.